Okay, so Fairytale is back, and we got the fight between Dogodom and uh, Natsu and Suzaku. Since it's been an entire month, I kind of forgot that uh, Natsu actually agreed to team up with Suzaku to fight this, so they both charge in together. Once again, this is very surprising to me that Natsu is actually agreeing to team up with someone. So Dogodom just out of the ground launches up a bunch of uh, stone squares, re rectangle pillars, that's it, they're, they're rectangle pillars that he just launches out of the ground try to hit them. Of course, they're able to dodge through them, and Natsu uses his uh, his fire dragon iron fist against uh, Dagomon, and in, as uh, as always, it's a giant-ass explosion, but it does nothing. I mean, Natsu, Dagomon doesn't even block it, he just takes it in the chin, and it's just stopped, like, no damage whatsoever. Natsu then gets crushed by a fist, <laughs> an earth fist, and uh, just smashes him into the ground like it, like it was nothing. Suzaku then has his turn. He uses his underworld purgatory dance, purgatory dance, and uh, also does absolutely nothing. And Dagomon says, what did you expect? If you can't cut the walls of this labyrinth, there's no way you can cut me. So when the two of them realize that they're kind of in trouble, but I like they can back down now. And so D Dagomon uses Dragon God Z... Z Kid Ra. I have no idea what that means, but <laughs> what it is basically just him launching a fuck ton of rocks at them and just crushing them from every direction. It basically just looks like a cave-in, but a cave-in that's going at like Mach 12. Natsu then punches one of his Earth's uh, stones at Dagomon, which makes sense when you think about it. Like, if you can't damage him, maybe he can damage himself. No, it, it doesn't work that way either. Dagomon just smashes it like it's a, well, a boulder, like a little tiny little pebble, basically. This does, of course, make a lot of dust, which then Natsu takes advantage of to then jump above Dagomon and do a uh, fire dragon talent attack. Kicks him on the top of the head. Does absolutely nothing. Dagomon just punches him away. Suzaku then tries to slash him. He catches the blade in his hand. Once again, no damage. Smacks uh, Suzaku away. They both seem to have a very similar mindset that if they just keep attacking, eventually they'll figure out a way to damage him. Obviously, that's not going to work, but it's not a concern because uh, Selena goes back into her human form and gets back up on her feet. And she looks ragged. I mean, my god, her entire face is just covered in blood. So she then explains to Happy uh, basically how the labyrinth was created. Dagobon basically, in a sense, turned parts of his power into spheres and then layered them throughout the area, which then slowly created the labyrinth, which is why it got so big. He then uh, reabsorbed a few of them back into his own body so he could then resurrect himself, in a sense. It means he was never actually dead, he was just... he just turned himself into a labyrinth, basically, which is kind of insane thing to do, but he was doing something with the heart to... I don't, well, we don't know what the plan is yet, but he was uh, doing something with the heart. We'll get to that when we get to it. But Selena explains that if you destroy all the spheres, you will basically uh, be able to weaken him severely. Which is basically what they did uh, against the uh, the Tree Dragon King. But he was actually sealed away. It, it's actually very similar, but one sealed himself while the other was sealed away by a, by a outside power. So basically, the way to seal a dragon's power is through orbs. Or if, you're, or if you have the ability to absorb magic, you can just uh, steal it like they did to the Water Dragon King. But we'll, uh, but yeah, apparently orbs are the way to go. So Happy asks how many uh, orbs there are, and Selena's like 72. <laughs> it's like that many? That's ridiculous. Yeah, that, that kind of is ridiculous. The tree dude only had like five. Then again, he he didn't willingly seal himself, so it would make sense that this guy would have so many, because he his best way to protect yourself is so this way not all of them would be destroyed so easily. But it doesn't really matter to Selena because she can, you know, connect space, she can teleport, make portals. It is not, it's not a big deal for her. And since she can sense their magical power, it would be really simple for her to get to all of them. Once again, the only problem is that she's basically on the verge of death. So she makes a portal to Urza's group and just drags uh, Happy through, where then she basically asks uh, Gajil uh, if he has an orb on him, because she can sense it. He goes, uh, yeah, this thing. She just takes it from him and then smashes it. She then tells him there are 71 cores left and then they need to destroy them all. And she basically says, please help me. Gray's like, no, why would we help? Same thing with uh, Sharla. She's like, ah, why would we help? Happy's like, no, 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 you don't understand. We don't have time to explain, but we need to destroy all the cores. So Natsu is able to defeat the uh, uh, Dargamon, the, the Earth, Earth Dragon God. And I was like, wait, but isn't he dead? Like, no, he's not. He's dead. And not Happy's freaking out and crying. He's like, he's back. He, he We need to help Natsu. Urza immediately just agrees. It's clear. Well, it makes sense. She trusts Happy. So obviously, if Happy's freaking out and says we should do this, she's going to listen. Plus, well, Selene's probably in more shape than she is. Well, maybe not. But the point is, they're <laughs> it's not like she's a threat to them anymore. And then Selene decides to open up a portal to uh, 
where uh, Lucy is and where uh, Lux is. And she goes, okay, everyone's here. Now let's begin with destroying all of the core so we can defeat Doug, uh, Doug Ron. Honestly, I'm, I'm actually kind of okay with this and I'm actually glad about this. This is a pretty common thing that happens in Fairy Tale whenever there's an overpowered character and they have to defeat. They usually defeat it as a team by fighting their weakness and while taking advantage of the weakness. And I think that's the probably one of the best ways to have a, a proper fight is actually have a find a character's weakness and have the team all work together just to uh, take a, take advantage of that weakness. I just my only concern is that it's the same weakness as the plant dude. Well, technically, he was, wasn't a weakness. Was it? The orbs sealed him. He was unsealed when they were all destroyed. His weakness was the fact that he he's so massive that he had to split his brain into like five different things, into like five different people, <laughs> and they had to destroy each of these uh, elements of his brain. So I guess it is slightly different, but still, I do enjoy the fact that there's always a weakness for some overpowered character. You can't just be you can't just be over, uh, a god and just be able to destroy whatever the hell you want. And since Fairy Tale is all about uh, family and friends, it's actually a good thing that they're always able to beat the big bad together and not just as a one-on-one -on -one fight. Well, usually. Like, sometimes Natsu beats the big bad all by himself, but it is a lot of teamwork, though. So, if Duggerman does go down this fight, which he probably will, either that or he's going to turn into his dragon form and fly the hell out of there as quickly as possible. But if he does go down, he basically made the same stupid decision... <laughs> Uh, as so many other characters do, which is instead of getting his shit together and then uh, before fighting, he decided to let it all. Uh, <laughs> he decided to basically uh, be cocky. That's basically the the problem. Is he's just a cocky idiot. So he's probably gonna go down, and then Igno will be all on his own to finish the plan, which is hilarious because the dude just got introduced and he's about to be taken out. But hey, that's his problem, I guess. But in the end, Igno has always been the main threat that has been consistent throughout this entire story, and clearly. I still believe he's going to try to resurrect the dragon's uh, race. I don't know how he's going to do it, but he's definitely going to do it. He's probably going to turn people into dragons, my mo biggest guess, but who knows, he may have other methods. But either way, <clears throat> that was the chapter. I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe, give a thumbs up, so you can enjoy more Fairytale and other anime things. Thank you, and have a great day.